I deserve to have a traditional wife. They want to go be a passport, bro. And I'm like, bro, you're fat, you're broke. You don't deserve a traditional wife. You need to level up. The same way they want a traditional girl. The girl, she's going to be way more traditional back in my country. So trust me, she's not marrying you for love. She's marrying you for your green card. So are you against passport bros or? I understand the fundamentals of it for those who have done everything in life to make sure they are a man. But if you're not a man, I don't think you deserve that, honestly. <laughs> Plus size women, if you ever felt insecure, if you ever felt like you was too big, if you ever felt like like you was just so wide, how you doing? Good, thank you. If you ever felt like you just so fat that nobody's gonna love you, girl, come come to come to Jamaica. They love us. Let me tell you something. They chased us around this resort. Listen, if you are over 200 pounds, bring your big ass to Jamaica. Please, I'm telling you, you will you definitely gonna leave with something. Every time them I pass them call, yo. Let me teach you your value. Follow back a money, you know, follow back a man. You a boss lady, no ambition. Follow back a money, you know, follow back a man. You a boss lady, no ambition. Fortunately, many of our young rebel soldiers died trying to bring this footage from the Death Star. I mean, Jamaica, from Jamaica, not the Death Star, from Jamaica. This footage, they brought it back to us so that we could form a plan against the empire, the evil empire that blames passport bros for doing the things that they themselves are doing. But fortunately, with this footage, we're able to see the truth. I said not in, sir. If you don't have your life together, what makes you think you know how to appreciate a like traditional wife? Uh, if some other guy who's living here who's never had an idea of what a male figure is in his life, he's going based off of whatever little content he picks from the internet. He's saying, well, I want a traditional wife, but therefore he doesn't even have like a credit score. He doesn't even have like his, his life in check. He's still driving the hoopty from high school. But you want a traditional girl. Like what happens when you bring that girl over here? You're going to basically make her a Western woman and she's going to realize like this guy really doesn't have his shit together now she's gonna all right so we've got a new story in search of romance try moving abroad for some american women relocating outside of the united states has improved their dating lives but some warn that finding love involves more than a change of address okay this is by sadiba hassan okay Casey Margot has been going on plenty of fun dates ever since she moved to Paris in October 2019. Men frequently approach her with the dramatic antics seen in Disney movies. This one guy was like, I ran through traffic just to look into your eyes once. And if you don't want to go on a date with me, I can die happy knowing that I just met you. That is the most pathetic pickup line that I, I've probably ever heard. That is some shit that you see in like one of those rated PG-13 movies. That's just sad. So anyway, uh, said Miss Margot, a 28-year-old English teacher from Los Angeles. After studying abroad in Paris in 2016, Miss Margot fell in love with the city and its men. She found a gig teaching English in Paris and moved there after she graduated from Sarah lawrence college in may 2019 now i just want to um i just want you to pay attention to some let's count out of like these uh case studies that they're uh, basically presenting us with let's count and see how many of these women were actually married abroad by any of these guys you see the one thing i can talk about when it comes to passport bros is the passport bros are not just going over there looking for dating and romance they're going over there looking for wives and that's the simple fact of the matter these dudes are going over there looking for women to marry and to have families with that's what they're looking for they are looking for wives now these women who are going over there they're looking for these romantic dinner dates and shit like i mean okay we've been culturally conditioned to believe that a romantic dinner date 
has, how should I say, uh, it's supposed to be expensive, it's supposed to involve wine, it's supposed to involve, like, a dress-up, like, you know, you got your suit on, she's got her, like, her dress on and everything. It's like, yeah, you'll see that a lot over there in Europe, but uh, here nowadays, it's like most of the dates that I see going on, these dates are lame. It's like it's you go the guy is taking you to Applebee's and you're doing a two for twenty, and that like okay you gotta order something you gotta like you have a a choice of ordering like crappy entrees like uh, garlic pasta or something or or um, uh, I don't know like they have a steak but it looks like a steak that you get from Walmart or something and. Um, yeah, I mean, their drinks are watered down, so even, whatever you order, it's like the mojitos watered down, the strawberry daiquiris watered down, the uh, 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 bellini, the peach bellinis watered down. It's like, the yeah, yeah, I can understand why some women would say, yeah, dating in America sucks. And to tell you the God's honest truth, you got to really think about it. A lot of women, especially young women, a lot of women have never been on dates I mean, real dates. I'm not because see, some of these dudes are taking them to uh, McDonald's and Burger King, and some of these dudes taking them to Applebee's and TGI Friday. First of all, yeah, those. I mean, yeah, they count technically as dates, but it's not that you have to have a specific dollar value. It's just that yeah, they're not romantic at all. And and I will say this, yeah, dating you kind of should dress up a little. You know, like you could do like business casual or something. You don't necessarily have to suit have to have a suit on, but a lot of these dudes like these guys call it going on a date and they got their pants below their ass and they're walking around with these big clown Yeezys on, these big clown shoes, or they got these big red boots or something. It's like it's just sad. It's it's just really just strange. It's so I, I kinda understand the reason why these women want to escape America and go abroad. But um, the problem that they're having here is that the women have played around with these guys for so long. The men don't want to take them out on dates. The men are literally saying, yeah, we don't want to go out on a date because uh, it feels like a job interview. And they're saying, yeah, well, why should I take you out for a date? And you're just going to go and meet some other guy after I'm finished taking you out on a date. Like they literally had stories, articles where women were coming out and saying, yeah, I just use men for food. And I use men for a date just so I could get food. And then after that, like, I ditch him and I go out with uh, Pookie or Ray Ray or something and get my back blown out. And that, and this this is literal. Like, they literally had this in uh, these articles. Like, women are using men for food dates. It's like, men don't want to take you nowhere. You know, and that's the thing. So they have to leave America and they got to go abroad looking for uh, 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 dates and excitement, you know. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. It says, now Miss Margo is living a dream of many American women who are seeking relationships abroad, some of whom cite the toxic dating scene in the United States. Uh, the toxic dating scene which you yourself helped create. And now you think that you're going to go over to Paris and you're taking pictures in front of the Louvre or the Loire, if I don't speak French. But I think the you remember this uh, this triangle building in uh, that movie with Tom Cruise where the uh, Omega Ceph or some shit was hiding under it and they had to blow it up in order to stop their day from turning back. Yeah, well, basically, I think that's called the Louvre or the Loire or some shit. I think that's where the Mona Lisa is or something. And um, yeah, so anyway, here she is taking these fabulous pictures like, you know, she's on Instagram, so she's got to take these photos so that, you know, she could, oh, I'm, I'm an influencer. Yeah, I'm an influencer. So I'm taking Louvre photos. Like, they, she wants you to believe that this is what her life is like. But I want you to just take two very close observations. Number one, there ain't no ring on that finger. You see that finger? There ain't no, before you can be an influencer and influence me if you're a woman, I'm looking at that finger to see if there's a ring on it. If there ain't no ring on it, that means men do not take you seriously. That means you're not taken seriously. You cannot influence me. So that's number one. You see there? There's no ring on that finger. So right there, we got a problem. Second of all, it's this glass of wine. You see this glass of wine? When a woman's drinking like that, that basically, that you know, she's drowning her problems in that wine, you know? Pinot Grigio, uh, 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 what is it called? Um, there's all, all, there's all so many types of Pinot Noir, Pinot Grigio, 
uh, White Zinfandel, Chateaubriand. Like, it's like there's so many. But these women, they, they can't sleep at night unless they've had a glass of wine for some reason. It's like they've started something where they just, like, they, they have to drown their problems with, like, a glass of wine. So, no, that, that, that right there is a red flag. But anyway, it says... Uh, Tender Passport, a subscription service that allows users to match with people in a destination of their choice, is one of the app's most popular features, with a majority of members using it up to nine times a month, said Stephanie Danzi, the Senior Vice President of Global Marketing at Tender. So that, keep in mind, these women are literally still on Tender. Uh, we've already found out that a lot of these people are fakes and they're bots. Elon Musk uncovered that a lot of these people are bots and they're not real people. So even some of these people that they're swiping left or right, I don't even know how it works because I don't use that online dating shit. But I'm just saying they've uncovered and exposed the fact that a lot of these are bots. And they're there to, what did they say? They said that those bots were being used to add engagement to the site. That's what they said. They they had to have lots of bots, fake profiles, and the bots can talk to you. Like, the bots can literally talk to you. Like, if you send it a message, you know, the bots will talk back or something. And they said that they did that to increase engagement so that these women didn't feel lonely and shit. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, from 2022 to 2023, there was a distinct increase in the number of female members shifting interest to unique locations. Uh huh. There is even a dating show that premiered last month on the cable channel Freeform, Love Trip Paris, where four American women moved to an apartment building in Paris filled with eligible French darlings. Although each woman has various levels of dating experience, they are all looking to find a French lover. I'm in Paris to find my woman. Caroline Renner, 26, said of the season premiere. I am looking for a fresh start, Jocelyn Aguilera, 26, said. Fresh start. You know what that means? That means that she was literally riding the carousel for years. And now she's trying to move someplace when nobody will recognize it. That's what it is. She was riding the carousel. Paris is for a lot of people the epitome of romance, said Suzanne House, the executive producer of the show. American women love Paris. Romanticized images of an American woman in a beret roaming through the streets of Paris, kissing a French partner by the Eiffel Tower. They are enchanting for many. Think Emily in Paris, okay? But there are other reasons people want to date outside of the United States. For Miss Margot, a black woman who attended predominantly white institutions throughout her school year, she felt ignored in the United States, as if she was not an option, she said. In Paris, she felt seen. As for the women in love trip Paris, they were all exhausted with casual dating in the United States. They felt like by going to a different country, suitors are more serious, or there's more intentions behind their actions. Miss Howe said, It's a sentiment that is shared by many American women who have had disappointing dating experiences in the States and feel that moving to a different country might help them open up to the idea of love again. Okay, so this is Susan House, the executive producer of Love Trip Paris. It seems to me like this article is like an advertisement for Love Trip Paris. That's what it seems to me. It seems because I never even knew the show existed. So it seems to me like what they're trying to do is get me interested in it. I can promise you I won't be watching it. Um, I actually prefer to watch 90 Day Fiance. And I like it only when they have like really crazy people on, you know, because other than that, it's kind of boring. But, um, yeah, that's just what it is. So, okay. Alexis Brown, for example, noticed a lack of effort and intention from the men she was dating in Atlanta, where she attended Spelman College. The dating culture in the United States is that it's cool and normalized to be indifferent to someone and not really express how you genuinely feel, Ms. Brown, 23, said. She, when she traveled across Europe for vacation from October 2022 to January 2023, however, 
the people she dated made it clear that they wanted to spend time with her. First of all, let's understand something right there. You know, see, that right there is a red flag right there. For vacation between October 2022 and January 2023. Sometimes people wonder how it's possible that these women run up such high student loan bills. Think to yourself this question. How did you take a vacation while you're at Spelman College? How did you take a vacation from October to January when obviously you're not working, you're paying your way through school? How did you take a vacation for months in Paris? You see, these are the little things that you got to pay attention to. Because, see, I've been there too. When I was back in, what was it, 2001, that's when I went to school in China. And you know how I paid for it? I paid for it through my, not really my, yeah, well, I think it was partially student loans because the way it was, I went to school in China. So by going to school, I set myself up to be in a dormitory situation even though I was right smack dab in Shanghai. So the thing about it is you were free to roam as long as you, you know, you had to attend your classes and everything, but you were free to roam. But see, I again, I took out student loans technically to pay for my way th- to go to China. And sure enough, when that bill finally did come and I had to pay that money back, fortunately it wasn't that much because a semester in uh, Fudan University was only like $1,500. And that was actually slightly cheaper than it was to go to CUNY at that time. So now I think it's almost double the price. I'm not even sure what it is now, but obviously the cost of living is much higher now than it was in 2001, 2003, 2004. So the bottom line is, here you got this chick taking months off to be in Paris. I have a simple question. Who's paying the bill for that? Because you know that she has to be taking that out in student loans. She couldn't be working if it's a vacation. So it's not a, it's not work. It's a vacation. But anyway, I'm not even going to delve into that because we already know what the truth is. Women hold two-thirds of student loan debt. And I'm willing to bet you that if we really dissected a lot of those receipts, a lot of that money, a lot of that is frivolous expense. But I ain't going to worry about that right now. Their interest could have been tied to the fact that I was just different from anybody they had ever met before. Yeah, we're in France and we've never seen black people. Yeah, we certainly didn't see all those African women that came up here. You know, we certainly didn't see all those Algerian, French, African, black skinned women. We didn't see any of them. Oh, we're interested in you because you're an American. Anyway, uh, who works in communication and social media. Regardless, she appreciated making meaningful connections and new encounters. I was just open and interested in meeting different people and having cultural exchanges, she said. C.P. Tabibian, Tabibian, C.P. Tabibian, who moved to Madrid at 35. Uh Uh-oh, that sounds like Christmas cake to me. After 27, I believe it is, your Christmas cake. Christmas cake. No! I love the Christmas cake. Okay, just in case you don't understand what I'm talking about, because you might be new here, it turns out that in China, after the age of, I believe it is uh, 26 or 27, I think 27 is the cutoff, you're considered Sheng Yu. That means leftover woman, right? Now, the Japanese, oh, these guys are brutal. These guys refuse to marry women over 27. They absolutely refuse. They they straight up refuse. Now, in Japan, they have a culture where, you know, they, they give each other cakes during Christmas. So, basically, they have this culture where they've decided that they're going to make Christmas cake. And they're going to give people Christmas cakes during Christmas because it signifies wealth and achievement because, uh, you know, cake was hard to get after World War II when Japan was decimated. The problem is these people can't eat all that cake because everybody's giving each other cake, so they can't eat it all because they're not fat people. These people are healthy and these people are relatively skinny, so they try not to eat all that stuff. So the problem is if you offer these Japanese men Christmas cake, they're going to turn you down because, you know, they got too much Christmas cake at home. The problem is they 
call the women over 27, they call them Christmas cake. So now if you were to go to a Japanese man and you were to ask them, and the woman's over 27, if you ask them and say, listen, um, you know, why is it that you Japanese men keep on running to Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and other parts of Southeast Asia to get women from down there, younger women from down there? Why do you keep doing that? And why don't you just marry a Japanese woman in your own country? You know, why don't you just marry a Christmas cake Japanese woman who's over 27? Well, that Japanese man, he's going to get very upset with you. He's going to get very upset. He's going to turn. He's going to freaking look right in your eyes. His eyes are going to narrow. And when they do, he is going to be pulled back. He's going to get very, very defensive. And he's going to say, No! No! Let the Christmas kick off! No! 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 Let the Christmas kick off! So that's pretty much exactly what happens. You know, that's assuming you're, you know, over the age of 27. They they just, the Japanese don't have it. They don't play. They do not play. So that is what it is. It says, uh, when I walked into the room, I wasn't the oldest person anymore, Mrs. Tabibian said. I wasn't the only single person when I walked into this room. In Austin, dating apps became tiresome for her. I felt like every guy was the same guy. She said, no, most of them were bots. Most of them were fake bots put there to add user engagement. That's what they were. I feel like if I stayed there, I'm probably going to be single forever. Being in a new environment made Miss Tabibian very playful in dating. I didn't have the history of dating guys in Spain, she says. I wasn't jaded. So you, were, you rode the carousel in America, and then you decide you're going to ride the carousel over in Spain. Uh-huh. Going on dates that were spoken entirely in Spanish was also an enjoyable challenge for Miss Tabibian, who is Iranian and Colombian, but did not grow up speaking Spanish. In 2020, she met her partner, who is Spanish. Now she is the founder of She Hit Refresh, a community that helps women over the age of 30, Christmas kicker, uh, move to a different country. Okay, so there's a, another uh, advertisement here for She Hit Refresh. Okay. So Jean-Marie Moss left and Cindy Sheehan met in Nepal in 2018 after Miss Sheehan quit her job in Denver and began traveling internationally. This is Miss Sheehan. Okay. For Cindy Sheehan, meeting people outside of her circles in Denver was momentous. She started traveling solo shortly after ending her 30-year marriage in 2016. So let's get this straight. This woman was married to a man here in America. And she started traveling after she ended her marriage. Now, whatever happened to those vows? You know those vows that you take, like, for rich or for poor, for sick or for health. Till death do us part. Whatever happened to that shit? I, I always remember when people made vows like that. That they were supposed to uphold them or something. I don't know. Apparently she wasn't worried about none of that. So now she's with Jean-Marie Moss. Jean-Marie. Jean she's with Jean-Marie. Okay. She was married for 30 years. And this guy wiped up that that. Oh, my goodness. Well, okay. Hey, Jean, if that's what you like. <laughs> she found the men she dated in Denver after her divorce to be unadventurous. She said she went on 60 dates in 2017. That's terrible. It was like a comedy show, she said. At the end of 2017, she quit her job and traveled throughout Southeast Asia for leisure, and she started using Tinder. Ugh. <laughs> because she, they were out there living their life, there was a lot more energy to the dates, Ms. Sheehan, 61, said about the people she met while traveling. 61? Jesus. It wasn't... That, that is beyond Christmas cake. That's beyond Christmas cake right there. 61. Oof. That's Viagra time. You need female Viagra for Sheehan. Jesus. It wasn't just somebody meeting after their work at the bank on their way home to let out the dog in Denver. In 2018, she met her partner for five years of oh, five years, Jean-Marie Moss, a 61-year-old professional tandem paraglider from Dordon. Dor 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 
Dor Dogoni, I, I don't know how to pronounce this, nor would I try. Dor Dogni, France in Nepal. Okay. You're not tied to your history, said Michiane, who now lives in Porto, Portugal. You're living more freely. For Francis Liss, it was also important to be around people who are passionate about traveling. She found dating to be difficult in the United States, but ultimately she crossed paths with her current partner, Samaya Williams. After buying a one-way ticket to Thailand, she had just experienced a breakup in Silver Spring, Maryland, and, she, and the move was a part of her healing journey. Uh, she started a podcast called Chronicles Abroad with her co-host, who had met Miss Williams, 40, in Malaysia. In 2018, Miss Liss interviewed Miss Williams, the founder of a consultancy, and the two kept in touch. They started dating years earlier. These are both women's names. I want you to notice that because the picture is coming up. When you decide to just live your life for yourself, you actually end up stumbling upon people that match your energy and the same ideas and values, said Miss Liss, a 42-year-old founder of The Wellness Company. Oh, yes. And there are their pictures. How beautiful is that? So, first of all, let's understand this. They were in Thailand. When they went to Thailand, chances are they're not going to find too many women in Thailand. When, I want you to notice something also. When you see these women who are going away for spring break and you see them going away for the summer, a large number of them avoid going to Southeast Asia. And it's a very simple reason why they prefer Europe over Southeast Asia. The men, now keep in mind, there's a large number of European men going down to Southeast Asia. The men in Southeast Asia who've come from Europe and America, they are not in any way looking for any of these women who are coming from America and Europe. When I was in Thailand, and by the way, I had made a video about this because uh, I have a video on my channel. Uh, when I was in Thailand, I actually had my Filipino girlfriend of the time with me in Thailand. And... I was on vacation. I was on spring break, if I'm not mistaken. That was uh, 2000, uh, I think that was 2019 before before we got hit with COVID. Yeah, so that, that feels like it was ages ago. But anyway, here I am, black American dude. I'm walking down the street. I got this Filipino chick with me, obviously with me because we're walking like hand in hand and shit. We're walking together. I saw lots of these Russian women. I saw lots of these European, French women. I saw these English, European women. I saw a lot of women from Europe. And they were all alone. The only ones who weren't alone, who actually had been with them, they were in tour groups. Meanwhile, if you looked at just about any of the men there, all the men either had Thai women with them or they had Filipinas with them. And you've probably seen it in some of the videos I've done. Some of these women openly complain. And they say, oh yeah, well, you're just walking around with this Southeast Asian woman and throwing it in our face when we see you abroad. You don't even talk to American women abroad. I'm like, what are you, stupid? It's like we didn't, go, we didn't fly 8,000 miles to talk to you. <laughs> like that, that's, that, that, We didn't go there for that. Like We went there to meet these far away uh, exotic women not you we have no idea why you're even there and it's funny because a lot of these women just like Miss Sheehan up there they come over there and those are the ones that you see out in the open and they got their feet all and the, the Thai women are giving them massages and this that and other and they're they're really living it up down there. They're drinking out in the public they got their feet massaged out in public back massage out in public but the thing that you usually don't see them with, unless they specifically came there with their husband, the thing you do not see them there with is you don't see them with boyfriends. You don't see them hooking up with guys from their country. You don't see them hooking up with Thai men because the Thai men ain't trying to hook up with them. That's just the reality. But fortunately for Francis Liss and Samaya Williams, Fortunately, they found each other. How wonderful is that? Move from Boston to Thailand following a breakup, huh? Yeah. 
Okay, well, at least you got, you know, at least you got each other, right? So, it's not just about the country. Can you go to a beautiful city and find love, or are you bringing your baggage with you? Obviously, you're bringing your baggage with you. Uh, Miss House, the executive producer of Love Trip Paris, said that was the social experiment of the dating show after all. You take these four women who have had a lot of issues dating, and now they're in Paris. They have a lot of the same issues, Miss House said. I would argue... That somebody isn't just looking for love. They might be seeking out something more deep in themselves, said Jess Carbino, a former sociologist for Tinder. The issues we have transcend geographic borders in terms of what is motivating us internally. That is precisely why the focal point for many wait, uh, women moving abroad is to learn more about themselves in a new environment. Dating is just a bigger picture, a a larger piece of the picture. Miss Brown, for example, had underwhelming dating experiences in the United States, but she also wanted to be in a new space. She traveled to 25 cities and 15 countries in three months. I felt like it would be hard for me to figure out what I want my life to look like in the same environment that I've always been in, Miss Brown said. That included learning more about what valuable connections look like for her. I really don't know that I've ever been treated better. She said about one man she dated in Vienna who was equally interested as she was in planning thoughtful dates. If somebody that I met two days ago can treat me this well, I should focus on building relationships with people who are intentional and want to do the same. Ms. Tabibian said that anyone who is jaded about dating should definitely try dating abroad. It can really feel like you're living in your own rom-com, she said. Well, first of all, dating abroad does a number of things to you, and most people understand that if you've traveled and you've dated abroad. First of all, because especially considering I'm an American and my money is worth more than most other money in most other countries. Um, when you're an American and you can dominate other people's economies, like I can go to what, Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, China, Japan. I can go and dominate all these people's economies for the most part. So my money is worth so much in their country that, I can literally go there. I can have anything I want. In some of their stores, I can buy anything I want. Their menus, when I go to a restaurant, I can order anything I want and don't have to even think twice about it because even the most expensive stuff on the menu is pennies to me. It's like, a, it's nothing. Um, not only that, but for one thing, you're meeting a foreign person and you're going out on a date with them. All of that emotional baggage and all of that uh, precaution that you normally would have here in America dealing with people, a lot of it just, it's uplifted off of you and you just feel better. Not only that, I also have to say, you got to understand, first of all, America is a toxic environment. That's number one. It's an extremely toxic environment. Everything's toxic about this environment. Everything from the politics to the culture to the religion, it's all toxic, right? So what ends up happening is when you go to these other countries, all of that is just washed away. It's just washed away. It's almost washed away from the moment you settle in your hotel room. It's like it's just washed away, washed away. The people are nicer in general. It depends where you go, but the people tend to be nicer. It's like everything just everything is just different. It just feels different. Everything is just nicer. Like I remember when I was dating in China. And I had a beautiful Chinese girl. And we went out, and I took her to nice places. Like, yeah, I could have gone to the cheaper places. And we, you know, we only went to the cheaper places, like, you know, for little things, like while we were walking and we were just touring. But when I wanted to take her out to restaurants and stuff, we went to the nice restaurants. We went to Jin Mao Tower right there in Shanghai, uh, Oriental Pearl Tower, that district, the, the, the Pudong district. Like, I was like, yeah, you know, I could take you out on a cheap date, but I'll take you out for a regular date. And the funny thing was, it really, really still wasn't that expensive even to go to a nice restaurant. Like, we went, I still have pictures of it. We went to the Jin Mao Tower, and uh, what was it, like the 70th floor or something on the Jin Mao Tower? And they, they had, she wanted 
to go to a restaurant that was serving American food, right? Now, I was comfortable eating that Chinese food, but she wanted to go to a nice American-style restaurant. So we go up to the Jin Mao Tower. Beautiful place. Very lovely decor. Very nice place. And she ordered, like, steak or some shit. I can't even remember. But it was like, yeah, we just had a good time. And and the thing about it, see, I think the thing that a lot of women don't seem to understand, because you know, there's 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 a couple of idiots on uh, YouTube who make uh, videos. They're like, oh yeah, men can't afford dating. That's not true at all. These men have money. They just don't want to spend it on you. That's the thing. For whatever reason, they've decided they don't want to spend it on you. They've got the money. You can't look out at their car and see the big-ass rims on their car and say they ain't got the money. You can't look at the fact that they're driving a car that they probably shouldn't be driving and say that they ain't got the money. No, they have the money. They just don't want to spend it on you. They're, if they can spend 30 and $40 a day smoking weed, yeah, they can afford to take you on a date. And I, I think it's also very funny that these women who insult the passport bros, oh, yeah, well, you, you can't even afford a two for 20 at Applebee's and you're flying over thieves. You can't. And it's like, no, listen, ladies. No, no, no. They can afford it. They're just not spending it on you. They're flying overseas. These tickets are sky high. These tickets are like $1,000 round trip, maybe more. When I fly, I only fly business class. That 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 right there is just what I do. I only fly business class. So I'm looking at every time I go somewhere, it's either going to be a two, three, or four thousand dollar round trip ticket, just like the last trip I just took to Maldives. Business class on Emirates, the greatest airline ever known to man, better than Air France with the Concorde. Had everything. They got showers on the fucking plane. I was in my seat drinking wine the entire flight. I was drinking different types of wine. I was ordering wine. Like, you know, I, I started getting bourgeois as hell. Whenever I ordered any food, I was like, okay, let's see what the wine menu says. Does this go with this? Okay, yes. Excuse me. Hi, how you doing, stewardess? Uh, yes. Please bring me the 1815 Pierre Prajol. And I can't pronounce any of that shit because I don't speak French. But I got real bougie. I pointed at it. I'll be like, yeah, bring me this right here. It was nonstop on demand drinking. It was uh, eating on demand. And when we landed, both the, well, first of all, the JFK Lounge, which I put on the video, and the Dubai Lounge. Open bars. I drink. I, you know what I said? I was like, yo, listen, I'm going to drink my ticket cost back. I'm going to drink that whole ticket cost back. I was having so much champagne. What was it? Moe and Shandon. And it's in the video. You can watch the video. Moe and Shandon. And I was sitting there pouring it up, pouring it up, pouring it up. I was drinking so much, the, the pilot's check engine light came on because I was drinking so much. And the only thing they're allowed to say to you, because since, you know, you spent all that money on these tickets, the only thing they're allowed to say is, excuse me, sir, would you like some more? Excuse me, sir, is there anything else I could get you? They wouldn't even let me get my cereal myself. Like when I was at the Dubai Lounge, they wouldn't even let me just go get my cereal myself. Excuse me, sir, do you need help with that? I was like, no, motherfucker. If I need help, I'll call you. It's like, listen, I can do this myself. I'm, Amer I'm an American. I know how to serve myself. These guys were floating around like bees. And their job was to offer you help and stuff. It's like, listen, listen, if I need you, I'll call you. So, you know, I'm the type of person It's like, listen, I don't need you waiting on me 24 7 it's like i could do a lot of shit myself i like to do a lot of this myself you know it just is what it is but uh yeah let me tell you something these men got this money they got the money the passport bros got the money they got it first of all a lot of these passport bros are older men who are retirees they've got pensions coming in my uncle i talk about him all the time he got himself a dominican wife 14 years younger than himself. And right now, to this day, they're still married. They got three children and they're living rich. They've got the money. 
They're just not spending it on you. In fact, a lot of these men who are, are uh, what is it, retiring right now, they're putting their money together and they're looking at these videos. They're looking. See, that's why. That's the reason why you women hate Filipino P. It's because these Filipinas are making these videos constantly talking about what it would take to live in the Philippines and uh, telling everybody, yeah, listen, if you come to the Philippines, you can come and you can have all this for like $500 a month. And these men are got, they got their pensions coming. And these men are like, yo, fuck this. I'm getting out of here. That's the reason why these women hate these uh, Filipinas. These Filipinas are literally showing you, yeah, you come right on down here. You can marry one of my sisters and uh, you can live happily ever after. And, and this shit will cost you $1,000 a month. And meanwhile, meanwhile, they're taking resources that you thought would have been reserved for you. You thought these guys were going to be your plan B. These guys got the money. They're just not spending it on you. It's just like, and I'll say this before I finish up the story. It's just like with Valentine's Day. It's like, yeah, I could afford to buy flowers, chocolate, and take you out to dinner and take you out to a movie. I could afford all that. I'm like, wait a minute. Flowers die. And they die early. So I'm not I'm gonna cut the flowers out. It's like I'm not gonna spend that extra $20. I'm gonna save that. You know, how about these chocolates? Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the dollar store and I'm going to buy one of these really big boxes of chocolate hearts that really look really nice. Yeah, it's going to cost me about $10 to $15. But, you know, I'm not going to spend top dollar on like Godiva or some shit like that. Men make cost-benefit analysis constantly. So, no, don't ever believe that these men ain't got the money for these dates and this romantic. Men know what a romantic date is supposed to look like. They're just not willing to spend it on you. That's what it is. Like, like for example, and I, I'm going to stop talking because I, I know. Oh, in fact, well, let, you know, let, what? no, okay, no, no. I'm going to say this first. When I want to take a woman out to a romantic restaurant, and it's funny because, like, okay, let's stick with French restaurants, right? There's a French restaurant in Manhattan. It's named Le Grenois. Le Grin, I think you spell it. It's like a frog. Uh, the, I don't, because see, I'm not French. I don't speak French. I'm not trying to learn French, but I believe it's called Le Grenois, right? It's called, it's spelled L-E-G-R-E-N-O-I-L-L-E -L -L -E or something like that. I, I probably spelled this shit wrong because I don't speak French and I don't read it either. So anyway, there's a restaurant. It's in Midtown Manhattan, right? French restaurant. It's a hundred. I think it's like a hundred dollars a person or some shit. And and they give you a full French service of dinner, a la carte or something like that. Like there's foie gras and there's all types of wine and they got floral arrangements and shit. And it's really, really nice. Now, I am not a fan of French food. It's just that it's a really, really nice date. Now, there are other places you can take women for nice dates. Uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Fogo de Chao. Fogo de Chao, we've got a couple of them. I've been to the, I, I think I made a video of the Manhattan one, and I, I think I did. And uh, there's also, I've made videos about the uh, the Long Island one. Well, there's one in Long Island that I know of. I think there's another one. And I'll probably try to go to the other one another time or something just to see what it looks like. thing about it is that's $60 for the Brazilian rotisserie where they come around and they slice the meat. They slice that meat. They've got the salad bar. So you go get yourself a big, nice salad, fresh lettuce, fresh kale, all that shit, greens, mushrooms, cheese, this, that, that. That's $60 a person. $60 a person. Fogo de Chao is like tier two dating. Tier one dating is Applebee's, TGIF, and Ruby Tuesdays. That's that shit when a dude spends maybe uh, 30 or $40 on the entire uh, dinner. Uh, Fogo to Chow is the next tier where it's $60 a person. And then after that, let's say you've got Le Grois where you're talking 100 possibly even $150 a person. Bottom line is, yeah, they got the money. They just don't want to spend it on you. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to get across here. They got the money.
And even if I didn't have the money right now, I got credit cards up the ass. I got a fucking 850 credit score and I got a bunch of credit cards that have $10,000 limits as a minimum. Oh no, I've got the money. They just don't want to spend it on you. That's what it is. So you're flying all the way to France and you're meeting up with Jean Joc, Jean Pierre, Jean Luc Picard. That's who you're dating, Jean Luc, Jean Luc Picard. And he's got the wine out. You're dating Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc Picard is dating you. That's what you were. You think. And then, okay. All right. Well, listen. If it works, it works. I ain't hating. I ain't hating. So anyway, let me finally finish this last. Because uh, I had diverted the hell out of this story. Now, you won't catch me accepting a date where a guy is like, let's pregame in my car. I don't know what a pregame in the car is, honestly. Is that a hand job, a blow job? I don't know what that is. So anyway, Miss Brown said, reflecting on a previous encounter she had. So Miss Brown was on the carousel. Let's just understand what we're saying here. Miss Brown was on the carousel with some Pookie or some Ray Ray or some Chad or some Brad. She was on the carousel and she got tired of the carousel, so she got up off it. That's an immediate block. Okay, congratulations. You blocked the guy. Congratulations. Okay. There's something down here about, I think, what is this, like post credits about better relationships? See, this is, you know what this is? This is basically like the female equivalent of game. Like, you know, these game dudes who talk a lot of shit and these Mackers, these Mac dudes on YouTube who talk even more shit. And everybody's a pimp, everybody's a player. And then when you see their women in real life, their, their women look like rhinoceroses. So yeah, this is kind of like what that is. This is women giving other women game. And they're basically trying to tell them, yeah, you should go to France. So you could be like Jean-Marie. Jean-Marie right here. You could be like Jean-Marie kissing on Cindy Sheehan at, at the age of the tender age of 65 or whatever the fuck. It's like 61. They're old. So, you know, that's what they're trying to convince you to do. That's what it looks like to me. That's what it looks like to me. This is like women trying to tell women about game. That That's what this is. See, I, I think that's, you know, they the, the, the seating outside in this Parisian restaurant, it's like you're seated outside and you're, and you're eating a croissant and you're, and you're drinking some Chateaubriand and, and this, that, and other. Women read these romance novels and they watch that Sex in the City shit and they think, they think that this is what it's all about. They think that they deserve this. They think that that's what they're going to get. And I have news for you. The men here, especially here in the middle, like, yeah, you're out of your goddamn mind. It's like, I ain't spending no money for no Chateau Briand. I'm not buying you a croissant. It's like, I ain't buying none of that shit. <laughs> you know, and they've got the money. Because I tell you what, when Brad is out there putting a new turbo into his WRX, don't tell me Brad doesn't have the money. He's got the money. He's just not spending it on you. That's what it is. So you better get, ladies, the passport hose, get your tickets, ladies. Because I tell you, France, what is it? France, like a six-hour flight from here, I think it is, six-hour flight. Let's look at this real quick. She hit refresh. So what is this? For women age 30. Oh, no, that's Christmas kicker. No, what the Christmas kicker. For women age 30 and up who want to break free from routine. I don't know why they wrote it like that. From routine and start a life of travel. Okay. Move abroad, travel tips, remote work, podcast. Okay, so they made this whole thing. Join the Move Abroad Now Boot Camp. Uh, no, thank you. Retreats, member spotlight. Okay, so for any women who happen to be watching this and thinking that I'm a male chauvinist pig, I just showed you that there is a website called She Hit Refresh. Right here, work from anywhere. They're talking about remote work and stuff. Meet the woman behind She Hit Refresh. Who is this? Uh, it says... We're CP and Annette, two friends from Texas who have hit refresh and embraced the road less traveled. We hope to help other like-minded Christmas cake, I mean uh, women who are 30 and up, break, break free from routine and start a life of travel. Yay. 
So you can sign up. It says listen to a podcast and talking about somebody in Spain, episode 53. So they got a bunch of episodes here. And, uh, yeah, it looks like they get, you know, they, they show all these pictures of what it, see, these women, they, they, all these women are trying to go to Europe. That's what it is. They're trying to go to Europe. They're trying to go to Greece, Santorini. They try to go there for vacation. But see, the downside is very few of these, like you see these women right here. Like I'm looking at these pictures. Is this, does she have a bra on? I don't think she does. But anyway. I'm looking at these women right here. These these women are fit, feminine, and uh oh, I didn't want to go to her Instagram, but they're fit, feminine, and friendly, right? So yeah, some of them can go to like Europe, and they can get away with meeting Jean Luc Picard, Picard, Jean Luc Picard. They can they can they can meet Jean Marie, Jean Jacques, Jean Jacques, Jean Jacques. They can meet him. And some of them can get away with that. Some of them. But some of these women, they're, they're out of their minds. They're going, they're going over there and they're coming back as empty-handed as they left. You know? like th th This chick right here, she's fit, feminine, and friendly. You'll see, as long as you're fit, feminine, and friendly, you ain't got to worry about it. You can meet Jean-Jacques. And Jean Jean-Jacques. Jean-Jacques. He's, he's interested. He's interested. Yeah, I definitely don't think she has a broad. Jean Jean Luc Picard, Jean Luc Picard. Yeah, yeah, you can meet that guy, and he's got a bottle of wine for you, and and y'all are having wonderful dates and shit next to the aloe vera plant and all that. It's like, yeah, that's beautiful. But uh, for a whole lot of these other women, it ain't that simple. It just ain't that simple. They know who they are, you know. I, I'm not gonna name names. I know, I know a bunch of them. They headed right over to Europe, and they came right back as empty-handed as they went over there. Don't ever let anybody convince you that these women are going over there and all of them are getting their backs blown out. Yeah, if they go down to Jamaica, that might be true. If they go down to Jamaica, if they go down to some of these uh, resorts like... You know, in Africa, in Jamaica, in the Caribbean. Yeah, that might be true down there. But when they go to Europe, these men in Europe are looking for women who are fit, feminine, and friendly. They ain't looking for, uh, they're not looking for Bertha. If you, you get my drift, you know what I'm saying. I'm just saying. So all I'm saying is that, um, you know, don't let them trick you. Because they'll, they'll convince you and lie to you and shit. They'll make it look like they went down there and... And they were getting their backs blown out. They were getting the walls knocked loose by the, the headboard and everything. It's like, no, that didn't happen. They want you to believe that happened. You know you know what that whole shit about, oh, yeah, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas and all that? No, they want you to think something happened. Chances are ain't nothing happened because they came right back here empty-handed just like they left. The only thing they left with was luggage. The only thing they came back with was luggage. That's it. So there's the story, ladies. She hit refresh. She hit refresh. There's the story, everybody. There's the story. Do you want to be like uh, Jean-Marie and Cindy Sheehan right here? You Christmas cake, you older than 30, you looking for love in all the wrong places? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love. So, you know, it is what it is. But uh, good luck to you. Good luck to you because the uh, passport bros are winning. The passport bros are absolutely winning. Now, as for the passport hoes, well, that remains to be seen. In China, if you're over 25, you are expired in the dating market. You are called a shenyu, leftover woman. A what? A leftover woman. After 25, you can't be picky anymore. It's like Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend. Imagine China is Leonardo DiCaprio. China is Leo. The whole China is Leo. Women <laughs> are poor and vulnerable. Easier to manipulate. Know their place. Disadvantage our entire financial need. They want their visas. They have to be quiet. They don't know no better. That's why you have to go to developing countries to try to take their women and it sickens me and um yes they'll do what you say she is in a dire situation because she doesn't know about much in life and they have to bow and scrape at these men's feet if you are a man and brag about go to underprivileged third world countries to get a wife an obedient wife you are a predator 
I dare you to say this in America. Do you go up to American girls and say, you're 25, it's done. You are already done for real. They would hate that policy. That they point. do. In China, they do that. How come you never say anything when they come up with the 25? Why don't you say that's how we do it in China? Exactly. I wanted to do that. Let me talk about it. I think Leo is just following Chinese culture. Maybe he eat too much dim sum. He went to Mr. Chow too many times. Uh. He just have the Chinese standard. You're over 25, you expired. Well, hello, everybody. I'm from Thai. I'm from the Philippines. We're sitting here long as time for a passport to come in. So where are you? We're waiting for the passport, bro. <laughs> Don't hate. Cheers. To be continued.